Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Physics 71. And today we will just continue our discussion of collisions. And then we'll start a new topic, which is on center of mass. Um, for today, we will be discussing 2D collisions. Also, last time we discussed uh, um, 1D collisions. We focused on perfectly inelastic collisions and elastic collisions. We have differentiated the different types of collisions. And um, again, for all collisions, momentum is conserved, or more specifically, or more uh, 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 strict in a more uh, in a stricter sense, uh, momentum is up is to a good approximation conserved, and then, however, the kinetic energy is conserved whether or not the collision is um, elastic. If it's elastic, then it is conserved. Otherwise, it is partially inelastic or or perfectly inelastic. It really depends on the context. Now, I asked a question last time. Uh, uh, we haven't considered partially inelastic collisions in one D because it is uh, you need a relationship between the velocity square. Remember, we are dealing with 1D. Uh, for elastic collisions, we have a relationship, which is the rel relative velocity relation. For perfectly inelastic, we just need one equation because remember, the final velocity there is um, just uh, is, uh, is unique. So the final velocity is common to, do, to the two particles. So we don't need more than one equation there. However, for partially inelastic collisions, it's uh, major in between siya. Kaya hindi mo alam kung anong gagamitin mong formula. You need uh, an explicit relationship of um, between the final velocities in 1D para magkaroon ka ng dalawang equations. Kasi otherwise, hindi mo masasolve yan. However, there's a different story for 2D collisions and we will see that when we solve some problems there. So for the meantime, here's an outline of this discussion. We have just review what collisions are and uh, review our notation that we will be using for the next uh, few slides. And then after that, we will solve 2D collision problems. Basically, what just happens is we are just extending what we did in 1D to 2D. Basically, ganun lang ginagawa natin doon. And then after that, we will discuss center of mass. Again, I'll just focus on, on the definition of center of mass and the important consequence of center of mass um, calculations, especially uh, the center of mass frame. Okay? Sige. Uh, are there any questions in this part? Wala naman. Wala? Okay. Um, sir. Thank you. So here are some objectives. After the discussion, you should be able to um, do the following. First, we solve problems involving systems in one and two dimensions where linear momentum is conserved. Again, for this session, we will focus on 2D collisions. We have done um, some problems in um, 1D collisions from last time. So kung medyo, medyo lost pa rin kayo paano mag-solve ng collision problems, pakibalikan yun or just solve other examples in the book or um, in the annotated lecture slides. So, uh, okay, and then second, we determine whether a collision is elastic or inelastic. Dito, dito medyo nagiging iffy na yung nangyayari. Kasi remember, 2D na to. Okay, and then we predict the motion of constituent particles for different types of, of collisions. Basically, we're going to determine the final velocities of the two part two particles colliding uh, given some initial values. For example, we need that we have some initial velocity and, for example, the angle for which they... Um, uh, for 2D, yung angles that we consider natin and so on and so forth. We will determine um, these uh, types of motions uh, as we go along solving these problems. And then finally, we locate the center of mass of the system. Again, our objective only for the center of mass calculation is to locate the center of mass. Yun lang kailangan natin for now. Okay? Questions so far? May mga tanong ba? None so far. Ah, okay. Now, so just recall our collisions. Again, there are two types of collisions. Um, elastic collisions were in kinetic energy is um, conserved and there is no um, kinetic energy loss. So for example, um, using the first notation that I'm, uh, the first notation, um, if VA1, if the subscript one denotes initial um, or um, the event before the collision, the event before the collision, what happens is that uh, the, the, the kinetic energy is just transferred from A to B, okay? So what happens is, um, there is no loss of kinetic energy due to frictional force. And hence, um, the final velocities will be different for each particle. Um, however, there's still uh, um, there, the total kinetic energy is conserved. However, for inelastic collisions, there is loss of kinetic energy due to frictional, due to dissipation and friction. And a special case of collision is your perfectly inelastic collision where objects stick together and there is a common final velocity. So as I said, ang pinakamadaling isolve na problems ay perfectly inelastic kasi you just need one equation there. Okay, just need one equation. Medyo mas kaya siyang i-treat dun sa ganitong, uh, ganung mga steps. So, okay, are there any questions for this? Walang tanong? 
None. None? Okay, none. So, also, we just um, recall the notations that we are using when we solve um, conservation of momentum problems in the context of collisions. Again, you may use notation one. As I said before, notation one, effective siya pag maraming states. Mas madaling gamitin ng notation, mas madaling i-extend ang notation one. Kasi gagawin mo lang, dadagdagan mo lang yung numbers na yan. Instead of one and two, kung meron ka pangatlong state, you have two and three. So, mas madaling i-extend to for, uh, for more uh, more than two systems. So, uh, for more than two states of a particular system. Uh, yun yung gusto kong sabi yan. Or if there are multiple particles, medyo mas madali siyang extend. However, if the, you just have a one um, uh, a one uh, collision problem, kung halimbawa initial final states ka lang, medyo mas madaling gamitin yung notation to, at least for me. Because um, it's cumbersome to write the indices. Um, kung puro index yan, medyo cumbersome yan. Pero kapag prime din unprime, alam mo na kapag prime, final. Pag unprime, initial. Diba? Uh, understood na yun. Pero madihirap i-extend ang notation to for multiple um, um, for multiple states. So, kasi dadami yung primes mo dyan. Halimbawa kung limang states yan, eh di limang prime yan, di ba? Hindi nakakalito na. Minsan, mawalan ka lang ng isang prime, malilito ka na dyan, di ba? Uh, so yun, hindi siya effective in um, in more than two states. Huh? So um, if you have more than two states, we will revert to the first notation. Otherwise, we uh, our default um, notation for these discussions is notation. Okay? Sana hindi kayo malito. Our thoughts? May tanong? May tanong? Answer. Ah, okay, thank you. Now, also, uh, recall our problem-solving guide when we solve momentum conservation problems. Again, the first thing that we need to do is to sketch the problem and set up the coordinate system. So, one thing, medyo hindi masyadong big deal yun, no? Kasi alam naman natin na positive right, negative left. Yun lang naman yung, yun lang naman yung possible na directions mo. So, head-on collision yan. So, called the head-on collision. So, medyo hindi kailangan uh, masyadong mag-drop. Alam mo lang dapat yung directions ng mga velocity vectors mo. Para, para hindi ka malito, no? Pero um, for 2D, medyo mas kailangan mo nang mag-jumbing dito kasi minsan nakakalito yung conventions on what the directions are. And importante dito, yung positive X at saka yung positive Y. Okay. And then we write down the initial and final velocities of the particles colliding. Uh, and then we use conservation of momentum. Um, in 2D, again, we use it per component. We'll show you that it's basically just an extension of what we're doing in 1D. Okay. And then if the collision is perfectly inelastic, you just need this to use this equation. And for 2D, ang mangyayari lang, lalagid mo lang ng vectors yan. <laughs> Magkakaroon ka lang ng vectors, therefore you, have, you just have the same equation, but you need to do this equation for two or more components. For example, X and Y. 2D collisions, X and Y lang naman yan. Okay? Expect that there is only one final velocity or final component of the velocity after the collision. So, ganun yung mangyayari. And then, if the collision is elastic, use the equation for relative velocities. Um, if you watch the supplementary video I uploaded yesterday, pinakita ko doon paano din arrive itong relative velocities. But, um, from the kinetic energy conservation and conservation of momentum, uh, but if ever na hindi nyo naman tignan, this is acceptable. Ito ang pwede mong substitute for kinetic energy um, um, relation. So, this can also be extended into vectors. Kasi we are we're dealing with velocity, um, relative velocities here. Okay? And then finally, you need to solve for unknown quantities using techniques of solving 1D or 2D collisions. Again, systems of equations lang naman like that. It's always systems of equations. Depende lang though kung ilan yung components and hence, ilan yung magiging unknowns and knowns mo for um, solving the systems of equations. Okay? May tanong ba? May mga tanong ba rito? Okay, so I hope this is clear. Okay, 